it's a very uh, emotional day. And I know that our ancestors are smiling down and rejoicing and saying, oh, a work and a job, well done. This is a day Ollie Gordon has waited decades for. What a history, and I'm so proud. She's headed to the White House, where today, lynching will at last become a federal hate crime. Gordon is the cousin of Mamie Till Mobley, who was the mother of Emmett Till. Teenage boy brutally beaten and murdered by several men in Mississippi, 1955. This new law over 100 years in the making. Gordon and her family help lead the fight for this legislation that bears her cousin's name. Lynching was pure terror to enforce the lie that not everyone, not everyone belongs in America, not everyone is created equal. The Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act makes lynching punishable by up to 30 years in prison. Anyone involved in lynching is part of the conspiracy and faces the same sentence. Everybody I talked to, Republican and Democrat, not a soul knew this was not already a law. Wow. It's a strange experience when you realize that something has not been done that everybody thought was done. To this day, it's unknown just how many people have been lynched. The Equal Justice Initiative has documented more than 4,000 lynchings of black people between 1877 and 1950. The lynching photos were a reminder of the racial hierarchy that existed, that you could kill a person, a black person, with impunity, and no one would care, and no one would be brought to justice. State and local governments did not hold anybody accountable for them. And so the, this is unhealed wounds that go deep within uh, the, the flesh of our, of our body as a nation. The first anti-lynching bill was introduced in Congress in 1900. Since then, more than 240 anti-lynching bills have been introduced. None passed until this one. Till's lynching and the bravery of his mother, Mamie Till Mobley, to put her pain on full display, helped change the course of history. I tell people, Amy speaks louder in death than he would have lived. Reverend Wheeler Parker is Emmett Till's cousin and was one of the last people to see him alive. We're here talking today because we hear Emmett speaking. Before Emmett Till's name became attached to the horror of lynching, he was Bobo, the playful big brother figure to his cousin, Ollie Gordon. She lived with him and his mother, Mamie Till Mobley in Chicago. He was fun loving. He loved to pull jokes on people. You know, he liked people to laugh. He was the oldest in the house. He was more or less our protector. She remembers when the 14-year-old left to visit family down in Money, Mississippi in August 1955. I remember Emma's mother trying to tell him how he should behave and how he should act because he wasn't uh, familiar with that lifestyle uh, in Mississippi. And that was the last time that I saw him alive. Just three days into his summer trip to Mississippi, a white woman named Carolyn Bryant accused the boy of whistling at her at a grocery store. A couple days later, Emmett Till went missing in the middle of the night. Brian's husband and other family members had taken the boy. He was brutally beaten and shot in the head. What was left of his broken body was found days later in the Tallahatchie River. Only Gordon still remembers what happened back in Chicago when the family got the news about Emmett. The grief in the house, the sadness in the house was horrible. The screaming, the disbelief. When Emmett's mutilated body was brought back to Chicago, his mother Mamie Till Mobley made a decision that helped launch the civil rights movement, holding an open casket funeral for her son. When Mr. Rayner asked me, he said, Mrs. Mobley, that's the undertaker, do you want me to retouch the body? I said, no, Mr. Rayner, let the people see what I have seen. I want the world to see what is going on in Mississippi. 
in this great old United States of America. Thank God she had the courage to show the world what happened to her child. We would not be here today had it not been for the pain and the suffering and the strength and the courage that the entire family showed the world. A murder trial would follow, ending in acquittal, a devastating loss for Till's family. Mamie Till Mobley would spend the rest of her life fighting for justice. Ollie Gordon helping carry on her cousin's relentless pursuit of justice. You've ended up fighting for Emmett, but in the years to follow, we would learn of other black lives that have been taken. I had gotten to the point where I would have to turn my head because it was all over the news. You don't have to hang a person from a tree. A lynching is a lynching. For some people, they look at this and they say, oh, lynchings that happened so long ago in our, in our country's history. Maude Arbery was yesterday, basically. So let's not pretend that lynching is something that happened 100 years ago or in the 1980s. You hunt a man down in the middle of the street, that's lynching. In 2018, Republican Senator Tim Scott and Democratic Senators Cory Booker and Kamala Harris introduced legislation again in the wake of the Charlottesville white supremacist rally and the murder of Heather Heyer. It failed. Then in 2019, Congressman Bobby Rush reintroduced the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. He represents the district of the Till family. Mamie Till's moment's spirit is all over this mill. In 2020, Miss Gordon and her daughter Erica traveled to Washington to push for the legislation. It made it through the House, but then stalled in the Senate over concerns from Kentucky Republican Rand Paul, who argued over how lynching should be defined. Senator Rand Paul decided that we already had a law on the books for murder, and he, at the time, didn't see the difference. So within these two years, his mindset had changed. It lingered for a while, and those are the frustrating years, but what keeps you going is if that's the definition of frustration in 2022, it pales in comparison to 1955. That trip to Washington, D.C. would be the last Miss Gordon and her daughter would take. A month after the bill failed in the Senate, Erica Gordon Taylor passed away. What did you think when you heard the news that it had finally passed both the House and the Senate? I broke down. I thought of my daughter, Erica, and I said, oh, if only she could be here to see the fruits of her labor. It was bittersweet. It's hard to celebrate this. It's more of this sense of you hear your ancestors sigh that finally, um, finally, the, the government of the United States of America has said that this is worthy of enacting a law uh, against, uh, against it. The family has struggled to get accountability for Emmett's death and to clear his name of any wrongdoing. The Department of Justice did reopen the case most recently in 2017, but closed it this past December. What do you make of the moment that we're in now? Is it different? We will have to see if this law is going to be effective or if it's just some more words on the books. We need to see if they're actually going to use it and enforce it. Then I will be able to answer that question. The hope is that this will serve in many ways as a deterrent and send a message that the federal government is putting its full weight behind the protection of people against these types of crimes and that this is a demonstration of how seriously we take the crime of lynching and the intent to eradicate the thought of racial domestic terror from our society. But in that moment today, when a long overdue bill finally became law, Miss Gordon says her thoughts were of her cousin Emmett Look what his death has brought to America, a change, the beauty uh, of uh, the passing of this bill, the coming together of the races to make this happen. And especially his mother, Mamie Till Mobley. She knows, like she said, Emma's death would not have been in vain. No, it has not been in vain. I mean, we look at a day like this all these years later, and they've been trying for hundreds of years, and finally, finally, we have an anti-lynching bill. Our thanks to Rachel. For more on Emmett Till's family's fight for justice, watch the docu-series 
Let the World See, streaming now on Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.